This is a lecture on genome-wide association studies, or GWAS. And in order to understand GWAS, we're going to have to understand a couple of terms, including polymorphism and SNP. And then we're going to talk a little bit about why SNPs are essential to do a genome-wide association study and what kind of things you can learn from a genome-wide association study and some of the things that you can't. So in order to think about GWAS, we first have to go back and remember some of the things that Mendel originally proposed, right? So Mendel, that father of genetics, originally proposed that each gene has only two forms or two alleles. And we tend to think about these two different forms for each gene as wild type or versus mutant or normal versus kind of abnormal. But having studied genetics for much longer and much more in depth than Mendel does, um, did, we now know that some genes don't just have two alleles, but rather have many alleles. And if a gene has many alleles, say 10 different alleles, it can be difficult to know which of those 10 alleles or forms is the normal form and which ones would be considered abnormal. And in some cases, there really is no normal versus abnormal. All the forms are completely normal and they exist kind of at even numbers within the population. And so this brings us to the idea of what a polymorphism is. A polymorphism is the existence of multiple alleles at a specific locus or location in the genome in a population. So when there are multiple alleles that are present within a population for a specific gene, that's what we refer to as a polymorphism. Multiple forms of one gene that exist um, in decent amounts within a population. And polymorphisms can be um, differences of one single nucleotide as you can see up here, those would be considered single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNPs. There can also be polymorphisms that are um, differences that are not just one nucleotide, but rather number of repeated sequences. So here we can see a polymorphism between these two individuals where this individual has three repeats at this particular location and another individual has five. So single nucleotide polymorphisms is, or SNPs is one nucleotide um, different between individuals at that particular location. And repeat polymorphisms would be different numbers of repeats or different numbers of this repeated sequence at that same location, right? And so really what we care about in terms of GWAS or genome-wide association study are the single nucleotide polymorphisms, or the SNPs, which I'm just gonna refer to as SNPs from now on. Um, so a SNP is a difference between two individuals of one single nucleotide. So one single individual base pair at one specific genetic location is different between two individuals. That is a SNP. And human genomes have a lot of SNPs. They probably have one SNP about every 1,300 base pairs. So every 1,300 nucleotides, you have a difference in your genome compared to the person sitting next to you, compared to your mom, your dad, your brother, right? So human genomes have a lot of SNPs. And the variation that we see <laughs> between individual human genomes, so the variation between what we see in you versus your mom versus your brother's genes, a lot of that variation, about 90%, comes from the fact that we have these SNPs or these differences that occur at specific locations. And so a SNP kind of sounds like a mutation, but the major difference between those two things is how prevalent they are in the population, right? And so if we're thinking about a mutation, we might say that the general population has this specific DNA sequence here on the top which ends in an A nucleotide or an adenine. 99% of people, if you looked at their genes and their genome, would have an A at this locus, this location, this position. And 0.1% would have a C. This is a relatively low number, 
not that many people are going to have this C at this particular genetic location or locus. But on the bottom, you can see that that's slightly different in the case of a SNP. The general population here might have this sequence, and this G or guanine nucleotide might be visible in 94% of people, whereas 6% of people, a much higher number, would have a T or a thymine nucleotide at that position instead. So mutations are much more rare in the population than SNPs. So we generally also think of most SNPs as being neutral, but there are some SNPs that we found that even though they're quite common in the population, can lead to deleterious effects or to disease. And the way that <clears throat> we kind of find genes that are involved in disease, particularly these SNPs that are involved in disease, is by using the Genome-Wide Association Study, or GWAS. And so what GWAS is, is a, an examination of a full genome worth of SNPs in different individuals to determine whether those SNPs are associated with a particular disease or a particular trait. And so in a genome-wide association study, we compare the genomes of patients who have whatever trait you're interested in to the genomes of control people or non-patients, and then we look for differences between the SNPs. We look for SNPs that are more common in patients than they are in controls. And those SNPs can indicate locations where there might be genes involved in that disease. All right, and so gene, GWAS allows us to start figuring out what genes might be involved in a disease. And I'm gonna describe this process again, All right? So we have a group of individuals who have whatever disease, the case group or the patients. We have a group of individuals who um, do not have the disease, there's your control group or non-patients. And we basically compare the genomes of the control individuals to the genomes of the patients. And we look for SNPs, differences in SNPs between the general population or the control group and the patients. And we can do that in a variety of ways Usually, we'll receive an output that looks something like this on the bottom. This plot is called a Manhattan plot because it kind of looks like a city skyline where there's like skyscrapers coming up. Um, each one of these individual colors is one of the human chromosomes, starting at chromosome 1 in blue, going all the way down to chromosome 22 here in dark blue on the right. And what we can look for are differences in the SNPs between the cases and control. And so after we're able, we find these differences, we can make an association between the SNPs that we see more commonly in people who have the disease and areas on the chromosome that might be involved. So here in particular, we can see an increase in SNPs at this particular location, and this is purple chromosome 6. Here we can see an increase in SNPs in patients in this area of chromosome 12. And we can see a really dramatic increase in SNPs in this area of chromosome 19. And so we can sort of hypothesize from this data that there are areas on chromosome 19, chromosome 12, and chromosome 6 that might be involved genetically in causing this disease. And we tend to call this an association study because it is not correlative or causative. All we can do is make an association between a SNP and an area on a chromosome that might be causing disease. We know the SNP is here, we know more patients have these SNPs. We can look in this area of chromosome six and we can look and see what genes lie there. Maybe one of those genes is causing disease. We know there are more SNPs here on chromosome 12. We can look for genes there that might be causing disease. 
and we know there are more SNPs in patients here on chromosome 19. We might be able to look in that area on chromosome to find something causing disease. So GWAS is a great starting point to give us an idea of where to look for genetic components of disease. Right? And so this is just a larger image of that same Manhattan plot. You can see chromosome 6, chromosome 12, and chromosome 19 having those high numbers of SNPs, those extended past this dotted line here. And that's where we would tend to look for genes involved in disease. But what we can't do from this information is we can't identify a specific gene involved. We can find the general chromosome area where that SNP is, and we can look for genes there, but we don't know exactly which gene it is. We also, um, but we can use GWAS to tell you kind of where to start looking for a gene that's involved in disease. And since we know all of the genes on all of the chromosomes, we have the genomic sequence for humans. If we know that something in the area of chromosome 6 or 12 or 19 seems to be implicated in a particular illness, we can see what genes lie there and we can start um, making some associations with that gene and disease.